Well, fans of Kobe Bryant paid tribute to the player at the Staples Center today. Welcome to your 4 to 5. I'm Eric Chilton with Tahitian Moyes and Maddie Gardner. This is an interactive news show. We want to stay connected with you, and we're going to take a look at some of your comments about Kobe Bryant's memorial later on in the show. We are live on our Facebook page and our YouTube channel. So you can leave your comments there as well. You can also use that hashtag 4 to 5 for us to be able to see them. Now, we have seen memorials since the crash, but the question today is what made it different? Yeah, this was a virtual who's who of, of folks that honored Bryant and his daughter and the other victims from the crash as well. It was Vanessa Bryant's first public appearance since the death of her loved ones and posted on Instagram today that the date was symbolic. She said the month and day represent Kobe and Gianna's jersey numbers. The year represents the number of years that Vanessa and Kobe were together and funds from the tickets sold today are going to Bryant Sports Foundation. Investigators say they found no evidence of engine failure from that crash on January 26. The National Transportation Safety Board reported that Bryant's helicopter flew into hilly terrain and was destroyed on impact. The report says the helicopter fell more than 4,000 feet per minute before it crashed. Vanessa Bryan is filing a wrongful death lawsuit against the helicopter's operating company. She is suing for negligence and breach of duty. The NTSB is still looking for a cause of that crash. And I made sure to watch part of the live stream of that memorial service and you really could feel the energy in the room even from across the screen here. There was some really star studded performances Beyonce performed, Christina Aguilera performed and one thing that was really poignant to me was uh, Michael Jordan's speech where he referred to Kobe as his uh, little brother, annoying little brother at times, but you know, he really still considered him family. You gotta throw some humor in there right, when you do you stuff do. like this, absolutely. Well, many people are commenting on news of today's memorial. Yeah, let's see what's going on. We'll check in with Jalen. What are they saying today? Yeah, so we shared the live stream for the uh, Kobe Bryant Memorial with right. you all on Facebook and some of our comments we got from you guys at home. Uh, our first comment comes from Jenny. She said they're going to be, going to be missed but not forgotten. Our next comment comes from Ramona. She said it was an absolutely beautiful ceremony. Nancy, she says, God give her strength, referring to Vanessa Bryant. Ruth says, so excuse me so sad praying for her and the children and mindy says believe i know i felt the same way my heart breaks for her this mm -hmm. is absolutely sad it's a terrible situation absolute tragedy that there were nine lost nine lives lost in this situation right. so just prayers out to all those families affected and i was i, I don't know what to say we're thinking right. about you know them, you know? it's just it's unbelievable it's true yeah it's such a huge impact on the world kobe bryant had and the strength that it took for his wife to get up there and address all the millions of people i'm sure were watching right. this memorial uh, it's it's unworldly and really uh, she was struggling many times throughout her speech and it was everyone in the crowd that was kind of giving her the energy they were saying vanessa you got this mm -hmm. we love kobe they were shouting kobe's name and somehow some way she managed to talk about her little girl Gianna and the love of her life, Kobe, and right. get through that speech. I don't know how she did that, honestly. As a parent, I don't know how you do that. I love what she said when she said God knew that Kobe couldn't be on this earth without Gianna and vice versa, so he had to take them together. I mean, I think that just shows the father-daughter bond. We heard a lot about him being a girl dad and how much he loved his daughters, and again, that was echoed today in that ceremony. Very cool. All right, we're moving on to some local news here. We are working to learn more about the suspect involved in the officer involved shooting that happened in Jamestown last night. The Guilford County Sheriff's Office says that the deputies responded to what they call a threatening situation at a home on Penny Road. The call was made by a utility worker who was working on a water main line. Officials say the suspect had a gun, approached the deputy in a threatening way, and that's when the deputy fired two shots, killing the suspect. The deputy wasn't hurt. The suspect and the deputy involved have not been identified yet. A jury found Harvey Weinstein guilty today. The former film producer was found guilty of third degree rape and criminal sexual assault, but he was cleared of predatory sexual assault and first degree rape. Weinstein can face up to 29 years in prison. His sentencing is on March 11th. On this day in history, Andrew Johnson was the first United States president to be impeached. This was back in 1868. Now Johnson, of course, was from North Carolina. He was a Raleigh native and the 17th president. 
But Johnson first got into politics when he moved to Tennessee. After the Civil War, he granted general amnesty to Southerners. Republicans wanted him impeached on charges related to removing the Secretary of War, Edwin M. Stanton. President Johnson was acquitted in May later that year. Well, you might see these billboards as you drive along Interstate 40. PETA is putting them out on the interstate, encouraging people to go vegan. Why? Well, it is their response to a tractor trailer crash that happened last week. That truck was carrying livestock and some of the cows were killed in the crash. PETA is now advocating for people to go vegan to keep livestock out of trucks. No word yet on when those billboards will be put up. It is almost time to raise the curtain at the Stephen Tanger Center for Performing Arts in downtown Greensboro and the center just announced their opening act. Grammy nominated artist Josh Groban will be here on March 20th. You can get your tickets starting this Wednesday. That's when the pre-sale begins. All right, looking at the forecast to see what's coming up over the next few days. Let's go ahead and start out with the short term. That will be tonight and tomorrow. We've got this steady rain. We might get a half to three quarters of an inch of rain before all is said and done tonight. You look for that 46 degree overnight low. That's not all that bad, but some of the heavier rains looks like they may be coming in early in the morning or overnight tonight. So maybe about the time you're uh, heading out for work or getting the school kids ready to go, you'll see it start to taper off, but still a morning shower. Might see some late day clearing. Temperatures, though, are cooperating for tomorrow tomorrow at 61. I want you to look at the radar. Yeah, we've got scattered showers. Keep that umbrella handy if you're heading home from the office or wherever you're at. You are right now. All of this will move through and then after that we get a second system that will move by. Just a quick look at our seven day. You've got a 40 percent chance of rain. That'll be today and tomorrow. Highs low 60s we will clear out Thursday and Friday. For the most part, it will be windy and chilly with highs only around 47 for your weekend. Mid 40s for highs. Look for partly cloudy skies and a 20 percent chance of a shower on Saturday. We are getting closer and closer to Super Tuesday and candidates are getting ready to visit our state. But before we take a look at the candidates coming to our state, we want to know if you think that matters. And do you think President Trump will get reelected? You can weigh in on WFMY.com slash vote now or on our free News 2 app. President Donald Trump is rallying in South Carolina on Friday and then he'll be in Charlotte on Monday before Super Tuesday. Former New York City Mayor Mike Bloomberg returns this week to campaign in Charlotte and Senator Bernie Sanders will be in Winston-Salem later this week. Mayor Pete Buttigieg and Senator Amy Klobuchar will also visit North Carolina this week. Before Super Tuesday here in North Carolina, the South Carolina primaries are this Saturday. The CBS News poll shows that Joe Biden is leading the candidates. He's ahead of Bernie Sanders by five points. South Carolina was the first state in the South to hold the primary. The Republican Party held the first presidential primary back in 1980. South Carolina primaries are open, meaning all registered voters can participate in either party primary. The Republican Party, I should say, is not holding a primary in South Carolina. Well, candidates will debate tomorrow night in Charleston before those primaries begin. WFMY News 2 will be there to cover the Democratic debate. Seven candidates will take the stage. 14 are on Saturday's primary ballot. Be sure to tune in to WFMY News 2 for live updates both on air and online. And we said it once and we'll just say it again for good measure. The North Carolina primaries are next Tuesday, not tomorrow, next week, Tuesday. The polls will open at 630 AM and will stay open till 730 PM. Remember, you do not need your ID to vote. All right, well, we ask if you thought President Donald Trump will be reelected because we're talking about all of the candidates really coming to our state before Super Tuesday. Right now, 73% of you say yes. All right, we will see. Now, if you still have questions about who's running for president, all you have to do is text us. Just text 2020 2020 to 336 379 5775. We'll give you a breakdown of all the candidates running at this time. Don't forget, keep chatting with us too. We're talking about the life of NASA mathematician Katherine Johnson next when we come back.
NASA mathematician Katherine Johnson died at age 101 years old. She was best known for calculating the trajectory of Alan Shepard's Freedom 7 mission in 1961. Then she was asked to verify the results of electronic computers of the orbit for John Glenn's Friendship 7 mission. NASA said Johnson's greatest contributions to space exploration were calculations aiding Project Apollo Lunar Lander landing. Now, in November, President Donald Trump signed a Hidden Figures Congressional Gold Medal Act into law. That law awarded medals to Johnson, Dr. Christine Darden, and two posthumous medals to Dorothy Vaughn and Mary Jackson. All those women were known as NASA's Hidden Figures. In 2015, Johnson was given the Presidential Medal of Freedom by President Barack Obama. Can you imagine with the technology in the 60s what she was doing and probably, honestly, let's be honest, probably a lot of longhand math. Com right. Computers mm. weren't, you know, as, as prevalent. Um, that's a brilliant human. You know, I just don't understand that. And one thing that stood out to me was for Glenn's mission, he specifically asked for her and said, if her calculations are correct, all right. I'm, I'm oh, good, good to fly. Yeah. So he actually spoke to her daughter when the movie about her and the Hidden Figures life came out, which was called Hidden Figures, and she lives or lived in Greensboro, Catherine Moore. So there is that triad connection uh, to Miss Johnson, and wow, what, what cool. a life right. she lived and all the things she accomplished. Such a hero, that's for sure. All right, let's see what folks are saying about this online, and uh, we'll check in now with Jalen. What's going on? Yes, yeah, so right now everybody on Facebook, they're just applauding Miss Johnson and just sending their condolences mm -hmm. to her and her family. She was such a historical figure in our country and you know she, what she did was so instrumental to such a key part of history in America that you know it's just unbelievable that uh, we could not know about this information for a long time, you understand? Right, Until the yes. movie came out, I was unaware. I'm sure most of, uh, hmm. most of America was as well. So it was just great that we were able to find out some of the behind the scenes effort because it's always the behind the scenes people that make stuff happen. Well, and right. you know, so women in yeah. science is such a huge thing because for so long there were so few women in that, in that field and then now to honor someone who did you know, arguably probably one of the biggest uh, scientific endeavors we've ever done as a country the first time we went to the moon and to space. Right, and I know that there's many other young girls that are now able to look up to Catherine in a way that they may not have before, before the movie came out, before, you know, her recognition was widespread. Mm. It's interesting how Hollywood, in a sense, changed the history books with this one because many people didn't know their story, and now it will be taught in schools. There are Barbie dolls about right. these women. Right. It's on social media, and they can see this, and uh, that, that's a neat aspect of this story. It's yeah. about time. You know, that's what we have to say. All right, 414 right now. We're coming back. A short break. Don't forget, stay with us on Facebook. We're live right now chatting with you during the breaks. Mike check one two. We're talking Dave Ayers, the goalie. Crazy. Cra hey, I mean, I'm moving my mic. <laughs> no, here we are. Uh, Mike check one two three four. Walking on set right now. I thought, I thought you were gonna say, uh, grab yourself a beverage, make yourself feel at home. <laughs>
Welcome back to the four to five. Uh, you know, you got to do what you got to do when an emergency <laughs> right. comes along. But this kind of goes over the top with that. Luke Lidden is here to talk about how the Carolina Hurricanes did that this weekend. Yeah, so on Saturday, the team had their Zamboni driver <laughs> on the field and they won. Nice. Luke, how does this happen? It really is like a movie. I'm not kidding. Both of the Canes, two goalies, got hurt in the first period of the game against the Toronto Maple Leafs. You have to have an emergency backup goalie. He was actually sitting in the stands watching the game, gets called down uh, to the media room, the locker room area. They say, hey, you're up. You got to suit up and play. Get ready. He's never played an NHL game before. He's 42 years old. Uh, Dave Ayers in a situation like this came in, not only performed pretty well, but he helped the team win. And right. he's already become a sensation on the Canes Twitter calling him the GOAT, the greatest of all time. It's funny. <laughs> the bio. <laughs> I know. Uh, the first thing Ayers said to himself was, geez, I hope I don't embarrass myself. Well, he did let in the first two shots. Oh, no. But after that, he saved the next eight to help uh, win the game. In the second intermission, the team told him, just relax, have fun, this is your moment. And that's when he shut out the Toronto Maple Leafs in the third period, something you can't even make up. Not only does he get called in the game, but he wins as a 42-year-old Zamboni <laughs> driver, becoming uh, the incredible. oldest player in a goalie debut to win their first <laughs> NHL game. And best part of all, he won. He earned $500 and gets to keep the jersey. How about so that? did they have to, what did they do with the jersey? Obviously it didn't have his name on it. It was just like a generic. Yeah, is that I, what it I was? Know, I, I believe so. Yeah, and he comes in and he wins the game. That's but, incredible. Uh, and his wife was in the stands. How surreal would that be? I, I just feel like, you know, the one day that she doesn't have her phone charged is the <laughs> one day that her husband is going to oh, make his, his guest appearance. There were cameras. Yeah, well, yeah, they were. But it's one thing for you to get it on your phone. I'm That's not saying true. that that happened, but I it would just, just can't, be ironic. I'd never heard of an emergency right. goalie. Then again, um, I don't know whole lot about hockey but that's so that's a thing yeah you know? it is a thing but I mean obviously they never get any notoriety because they never usually play but in this odd instance both their goalies get injured and they have to have someone so every team has an emergency mm -hmm. goalie. so he was with the Toronto Maple Leafs and he's there to help either the Leaves oh. or the oh. Canes. oh I didn't know that yeah. okay. so he helps either team whether it's home or away and he jumped in they're like well you don't have a goalie so I'll help you and he won the game so was it true somebody maybe you don't know this I'm not sure I just saw online some people posted that he was wearing a Maple Leafs shirt in the stand I'm going to have to look that up. Uh, I'm not sure, but I, I, I can believe true. it. Yeah, because he's practiced with them before. Okay, um, all right. It's really cool. He's going to be the siren sounder tomorrow at the Canes game because oh. they're like, oh, my goodness, you helped us win the game. And it's in a huge playoff race, too, oh. so they needed each and every win. Well, Governor Roy Cooper yeah. is going to give him some kind of award. Yep. It's state hero. And, yeah. they, and they're, well. the, the mayor of Raleigh is making it David Ayer's day, day tomorrow, so this That's is going to be interesting. I want to yeah. be an emergency goalie. Uh, Seriously. How do you sign up to do that? I don't, I don't know, but it was yeah, pretty incredible. All right, All right, we're coming right back. Stay there. We'll take a short break.
So as you're leaving the office today, think about this. Does your work follow you home via your laptop? An article on TheAtlantic.com says that is the case now more than ever. They said that more than smartphones, the newer, more portable laptops are ending the concept of having a work hours or a work day, so to speak. Improvements in technology have allowed us to stay connected for longer, and the article goes on to say that young professionals don't know really the difference of in the, quote, being available at any time idea, and will thereby be more susceptible to burnout earlier in their careers. Good. And it's interesting to see. I know, yeah. Awesome. Good for that, Maddie. I'm so happy that you have that ahead of me. <laughs> it's kind of a, to me, it's, it's a, it, bother, it used to bother me in the very beginning because obviously I came from a different time period. And you're like, you do your job and you go home right. and you have a little homework, but usually you're done. Um, but n now I actually like it because what if I do need to leave early to do whatever? I can take my laptop and finish it at home when I right. need to. I, I don't mind it like a lot of people do my age. I always just, it's hard for me to fathom because I'm in news and I've been in news that there are other industries where you don't necessarily need to take yes. your work home because in news you're always on. I have to know what's happening at all times because I could get called into work and I could get sent somewhere, you know? So I always feel like if I bring my laptop home, that gives me peace of mind. Really? Just in case I'm something the opposite. happens. I don't take my laptop home. I always have my work phone, so I'm connected with email and things like that. And I check the news when I'm on my weekend. Uh, but I really have found that on the weekends I'm able to disconnect and then if someone calls me then I can reconnect, right? I <laughs> like do if that I get too. called in. It's just during the week that I'll take it home mm -hmm. once in a while just so I can I'd rather sit on my couch, you know, with a cup yeah. of coffee or something and do it that way. But. And now a lot of people, they may not have a laptop, but they're still doing so much work on their phones, it's whether true. that's responding mm -hmm. to emails or still looking things up on their web browser. I mean, it's it's hard to just cut off technology. It is in general. Yeah, and part yeah. of this job is being on social media, right? right? So yeah, that I, I do log in on the weekends and chat with people on Facebook yeah. and whatnot, but I'm not writing news stories on a Saturday right. morning anymore. Yeah, so I asked people on my Facebook page, you know, I asked, what do you do to manage a work-life balance in this technology-focused world? And I know a lot of them weren't focused so much on uh, laptops, but they still had something to say. Absolutely. So this is one of the most important things in today's day, you know, you're having to balance your life and your work and people require a lot, but you know, too much is required. Well, too much is given, much is required. Right. Mm -hmm. So our first comment comes from Alex. He says, I don't usually check my work phone after hours. It is, it sits on the counter forgotten until 7 a.m. the next day. He also doesn't give out his personal number at work. And our next comment comes from Ken. He says, I keep my phone on vibrate at all times. If I get a call from work during my free time, I let it go to voicemail, check it and decide if it's worth an immediate response. Number one rule, I don't allow any co-workers to follow me on social mm. media. Ooh. Gotta keep those boundaries. Right. That is something that is kind of tough in our industry. No, this I, is so I, much that we have to do for social media, you know? And it's not even that. I love my co-workers. I'm always with my co-workers. Right. And I actually have this conversation with my fiance all the time. He's like, it's a little weird how much time you spend with your co-workers. I'm like, it's well, they're the weird. only ones that work the strange yes, hours that's as right. me. I will, and get it. I will say it's hard when a significant other comes in and they're at a news event and we're all just talking about our jobs. And, and they if just, they can stick it out, right. they end right. up yeah. getting engaged. So. <laughs> or I get engaged. That's so other. funny. Yeah. yeah, because nobody understands this job, like people yeah. that, that are in it. Yeah, yeah and I'm sure, sure it's the same with your jobs, right? Like no one understands your job like your co-workers right. do, so it's it's good to chat it up. It's it is. True. It's All right. cathartic sometimes too. And we none of us can stop talking. So that's <laughs> clearly it's, it's what we do. <laughs> yes. Let's let's take a look at our as my producer says, go to the weather, Eric, right now. Sixty one degrees uh, for Tuesday, sixty three on Wednesday. Now the rain that we have now, it'll be sporadic. It'll get heavier by the way in the early, early morning hours. I'm not talking about when you're going to work, but then that may be three to five AM time period. And then maybe just a stray shower uh, in the mornings and then it might get a little bit of a break in it in the middle of the day Wednesday, but it's back in again by afternoon, 40%. Uh, cooler for the weekend, even though we see clearing for Thursday and Friday. Highs will be in the upper 40s and mid 40s for your Saturday and Sunday. We're coming back. Yes. <laughs> Just run around, dude. Run around. Wear your pajamas. 
Right. Hey, you're getting me a mic check, and you, you just heard about Matt running around in his pajamas. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> and Brent's laughing. <laughs> okay. There you go. Uh huh. Welcome. Good afternoon. Welcome back to the 4 to 5. I'm Eric Children, joined by Maddie Gardner and Tahitian Morris. Yes, we are so happy you are here on this Monday afternoon, ready to inform you, really make you feel connected, and let you in on our world. So what we want you to do is use that hashtag, it's the word for number two, word five, as you post on social media and on our live stream that we stream on Facebook and YouTube so we can get to your comments. In the meantime, we are going to get you all caught up to speed with your headlines of the day with your 4 to 5 roundup. We are beginning on the West Coast today. The celebration of life for Kobe and his daughter Gianna Bryant happened at the Staples Center today. Thousands of people gathered for the public memorial where Bryant played his entire career. Kobe and Gianna, uh, were, Kobe and Gianna were killed along with seven other victims in that helicopter crash on January 26. The proceeds for tickets purchased today will go to Bryant Sports Foundation, which supports youth sports in underprivileged communities. In other news, the jury found Harvey Weinstein guilty today. The former film producer was found guilty of rape in the third degree and criminal sexual assault. He was cleared of predatory sexual assault and rape in the first degree charges. He could face up to 29 years in prison come sentencing on March 11th. And back here in North Carolina, a Charlotte man lost his battle to cancer just three weeks before his wife's due date with their child. Daniel Meggs was diagnosed with stage four colon cancer just three weeks before he married his wife, Jordan. The cancer eventually spread to his liver. Daniel died on Friday and Jordan's due date is March 11th. Now, would you fly to a different state just to get a refund on your wedding? A triad couple tells WFMY News 2 that's what Noah's event venue offered to them. The couple says their wedding planner mentioned an offer from the venue asking the couple to fly all the way to Utah for a possible refund still not set in stone. The company's bankruptcy attorney says that is not true and it's unlikely clients will get refunds. Noah's event venue unexpectedly closed earlier this month. And the Triad Bridal Association created a list of vendors offering to help couples impacted by the sudden closure of NOAA's. You can find that list on our website, WFMYNews2.com. Well, today we got a closer look inside the Stephen Tanger Center for the Performing Arts in downtown Greensboro. The center announced its grand opening day is going to be March 20th, and Josh Groban will headline the grand opening performance. 
The event center will host 150 events each year, including concerts, Broadway shows, and of course other performances. The venue sold, get this, 16,000 seat memberships before opening day. Construction on the Tanger Center should be complete by the grand opening. And the Carolina Theater, they're making a huge announcement tonight. The theater says that the announcement is about their, quote, setting the stage capital campaign. They're not really revealing hints just yet as to what the announcement could mean for the theater. Make sure you stay tuned to WFMY News 2, both on air and online, for updates as we hear their announcement. The Guilford County Sheriff's Office is hosting a safety community forum tonight. The forum is to uh, overhaul their safety and security procedures in certain places of worship. So this is what it means. It includes training for faith leaders on handling violent threats and crisis response. That event starts at 630 at the Fairfield United Methodist Church. The CDC confirms five evacuees from the Diamond Princess cruise ship have the coronavirus. Those evacuees are at a joint base in San Antonio Lackland. That's the same cruise ship that a Winston-Salem woman was quarantined on. So how did the cruise ship become the biggest outbreak of the coronavirus outside of China? Let's connect the dots. The Diamond Princess cruise ship is so far the largest concentration of coronavirus cases outside of China. So how did the luxury cruise ship become a petri dish for the potentially dangerous virus? Let's connect the dots. On the last night of what was supposed to be a two week cruise, the captain announced that one of the passengers who had left the boat nine days earlier had been diagnosed with coronavirus. But normal cruise activities continued. According to the New York Times, it took more than 72 hours to impose a quarantine after the Japanese government found out about the case. The Times reports that even after that, sick crew members slept in rooms with healthy co-workers who were serving the public. Medical professionals worked on the ship without full protective gear and passengers with symptoms went days before being tested. The quarantine has now ended, but health officials are concerned that not enough precaution was taken. Over a thousand passengers that tested negative were released in Japan, but experts say the exposed people could still develop symptoms. Evacuated Americans are now in quarantine again, this time at American military bases. Well, the coronavirus is also hitting the European stock market hard, and Italy now has the largest outbreak in Europe. The center of that outbreak is just a few miles away from Milan, the country's financial capital. Back here in the States, the Dow fell nearly a thousand points in the first minute of the opening bell today. Markets in South Korea and Italy led the, led the decline, falling by nearly 5%. Well, we're looking at our forecast today, and as far as uh, temperatures go presently across the area, it's not all that bad, really. And this morning wasn't that bad either. 47 degrees in Greensboro, Winston-Salem, and High Point. We have 46 in Lexington. When you look at this overall uh, tonight, we'll see mild overnight lows in the mid-40s. In fact, we really won't change very much temperature-wise. You might see a 2 or 3 degree difference from now till tomorrow morning. But steady rain could be heavy at times in the very early morning hours, 3 a.m., say, to 5 a.m. And then tomorrow, a morning shower with possible late-day clearing a high of 61. We're at 63 on Wednesday, still a 40% chance of a late day shower, clearing out windy, chilly and partly cloudy for Thursday with a high of 47. The coldest mornings will be Friday and Saturday in the mid to upper 20s. Uh, Friday, Saturday, a 20% chance of a shower, by the way, but 45 and 47 for those two days. Sunday cold, Monday cold again, but we'll squeak back up to about 50 by the beginning of next week. Up until about six months ago, I had a 2005 Honda and I loved this car. First and foremost, no car payment, but also yeah. no bells and whistles. I'm talking cup holders. That was a big deal in 2005. Okay, so of all the newer car bells and whistles, I'm wondering which ones you most appreciate or you're like, now I can't live without it. Backup Bluetooth. sensor. Oh, that's my number one the, the backup yeah. sensor. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would back into everything right. without that. Parallel parking is a lot easier now. Gotcha. Well, now they have the, the button that can parallel park oh, your car for you. you. I'm I've a little scared that. for that's that one. That's a spaceship, not a car. <laughs> oh, okay. There's that. But you also like the Bluetooth. Oh, I love so you the can Bluetooth. do Bluetooth. hands free. Yes, I do like my music. That. Okay, so Consumer Reports really quick to say that the safety features really are worth having. But if you have a newer car, I don't know if you guys have found this out yet, you may get <coughs> sticker shock when you try to repair it. 
These advanced safety systems can't work without sensors. Unfortunately, the sensors are located in these easy to damage areas like the bumper or the windshield or the side mirrors. According to RepairPal, the average cost, let's say, of a basic windshield replacement runs 300 to 500 bucks. But a replacement with one of those new, like, smart ones, it says it can go anywhere from 800 to, like, $1,500. Okay, so you know this. <laughs> He's okay. Happened to me. Crack in the windshield, rock flies up on the highway, get a small crack. I have the whole sensor. Yeah. Area. I got my car all teched out, and it uh, was about $1,200 to get oh, the windshield geez. replaced. Okay. So you have seen that, but yes. still worth all of the bells and whistles, right? Yeah, that hurt, but oh, yes, okay. I still would yeah, do that. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so we want to let you know that tonight on Two Wants to Know what your insurance pays and the top rated safety features for you to look for in those newer cars. And have you ever bought something and wanted your money back? This is the, uh, like the original bill. I told you, uh, my wife, Lietta, I told her, I says, we're not going to get this money back. And the bill was over $2,100. The item bought wasn't doing what it promised. <sighs> so you can imagine this man wanted his money back. Uh, what's interesting is that businesses can say no to a refund. They don't have to give you your money back. It is their policy. Do you have to like know before you buy? Yes, you do. Okay, good, because I was like, well, That's I'm sorry. That's right. They have to tell you ahead of time, hey, there's no, no refunds, refunds yeah. or it's as is or whatever it is. So tonight um, at six o'clock, we actually solved this case, but you might have a case that you need our help with. We want you to go to our website right now. Click on the two wants to know tab. The complaint form, it is right here for you to fill out. All right, and we do want to check in with Jalen Gilkey to see what everyone is saying online. I believe I saw a, a comment here from Caroline saying she loves seat warmers. Yes, oh, she, I love feature. those too. She loves seat warmers. She yeah. also says sensors are super expensive. She had a maximum once, and it was over a thousand dollars to get that repaired. Yikes. I'm looking at Tanya Rivera, Ooh. who's still on set, <laughs> shaking her <laughs> head. Shaking her heads. Oh, that hurts. My goodness, that's a lot. For yeah. some sensors. I mean, that's what, and the front of my car has the, the front sensors too, you know, so you yeah. back up what, and I uh, had just a fender bender, but it cracked part of that bumper, and I got it checked out, and they were like, oh yeah, that'll be about $2,500 for the front of, well, no, hmm. I'm sorry, that's not true, it was about $1,700, but still. I'd have more fender benders without my sensors. Yeah, true. <laughs> I need them. Well, I will say this, don't always <laughs> trust those cameras, because I was in a car with someone who, and I'm not going to name who, that I'm related to. <laughs> and they just backed up into the car, even though you could see it on the sensor and the screen. Oh, well, they weren't paying attention in general. <laughs> no, because... I still do the, the old it, driver's it, it edge, turn around and The look. sensor was just a little bit off. Oh, okay. It was well, that's just bad. a little bit off. So if the sensor's off and the camera is showing that you are... You have room. Yeah, then you just hit it. So I don't trust those things as, as much. Hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, let's take a look at what's coming up after the break. A Clemens Middle School student is catching everyone's eyes with his different abilities. We'll introduce you to uh, Gavin Hardy in just a few minutes. But in the meantime, do you have a hidden talent? Go ahead and get on the WFMY News 2 Facebook page. We are live streaming right there. Find this video and comment on our live stream feed. Do you have a hidden talent? We're going to take a look at your comments after Gavin's story.
Welcome back to the four to five athletes, of course, are more than just the sport that they play. Many are straight A students. Others have hidden talents and some just seem to excel in everything. That's how teachers and coaches describe one Clemens Middle School student. I went to Forsyth County to see for myself. <laughs> You might say basketball is like music. The ball hitting the court, resonance. A shoe squeaking against the hardwood, pitch. The perfect shot, crescendo. And then... It's the discipline. I think both go hand in hand. You have to be very disciplined to be a great musician. The same thing with an athlete. You know, you have to practice it. You have to do it when nobody's looking. You know, you gotta, you gotta be able to work hard when nobody's watching you do it. Coach Tommy Witt says eighth grader Gavin Hardy brings a certain harmony to the Clemens Middle School gym. I hope to play at a Division I school. My dream is to get into the NBA. I know it's going to take a lot of hard work, but I'm willing to put in the work. Averaging 19 points per game as the Cardinals' small forward, he has big dreams and the mindset to make it happen. Just keeping a tunnel vision, staying focused, making sure you block out all the distractions. You got to get in, get in mind, know what you want, and attack it and strive to be the best. For 10 years, Gavin's been on the court. Well, I was dribbling around basketballs around age three. But this was something he'd never done before. Well, it's funny. Uh, we want to get people to play the national anthem. And I asked Barbara, I said, you think Gavin can play the national anthem? I knew he could do it. And she was, oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just, it was just a no-brainer. Yeah, he can do anything. He want, put, Whatever he puts his mind to, he can do. A lot of kids get real bashful about that stuff. Not Gavin, he's like, yeah, I can do it. See, Gavin isn't just really good at playing basketball. His playing is um, beyond exceptional for his age. He's also really good at playing the bass. I just like classical music. Um, I've been listening to classical music ever since I was four. I just like the string family, and I like the, the dark tone of the bass. Gavin says he usually listens to string music to get pumped up for a game. But before the team played Winston-Salem Prep, he decided he'd be the string music before tip-off. Yeah, I just thought it would be cool for a basketball player on the team to be able to play the bass before a game. Clearly, his classmates thought it was cool, too. Orchestra teacher Barbara Bell says Gavin's talent and hard work together hit the right notes. He always takes it to the next level. He's always interested in more. Um, he's never... Um, doubts himself. He just keeps working harder to get everything, um, keep going to the next level. A trait he's certainly rehearsed here. When your best player is also your hardest worker, you have a chance to be really good, and that's what Gavin's done for us. It's not just about draining a three or perfecting a song for Gavin. It's about both. If you're gifted at two things, you should be able, you should do both of them. I, I love that split screen basketball yeah. and the base. That's incredible. That's his world. Basketball and so orchestra. Cool. So they're actually playing for the conference title tonight, the Clemens Middle School Cardinals. And uh, by the way, he also plays the piano. Gavin does. He was third place in the Moxley competition last year. And yeah, he was the youngest in his age group My goodness. at 13 years old. So what you're telling me is we need to remember this now. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. And you said straight A's, right? Straight A's. He wants to play Division One basketball and he also wants to be in a youth orchestra. And then after college, he wants to play in an orchestra. So I mean, <laughs> his teachers and his coaches, everything they said about him, I was with so him true. maybe two hours. It seemed like he was a stellar, stellar I think kid. maybe we should listen to string music to get psyched <laughs> to up. Get I told him the show. Right. I asked him if he, if he thought in classical music, right? Like when he's dribbling up yes. the court, if it's, and he was like, no, but I do listen to it before the game. That's pretty cool. Wow. It's a good find. That's probably both sides of the brain, or is it the same Absolutely. side of the brain well, for athletes and music? Oh, that's true. I don't know. I don't know. You're asking me hard questions now. Yeah. We'll have to no, ask, we need Gavin. To ask him. Gavin he know. will know. Yes, he, he'd probably <laughs> tell us. Well, surveys show that. Yeah. No, yeah. I did ask people on my Facebook page if they had a hidden talent. <laughs> uh, and Jalen, we do have one lady on the live stream who needs to meet Gavin. This is someone that needs to meet Gavin and pretty much everybody else needs to meet her as well. This is someone very special in my life, Miss Caroline Jones. She has hidden talents, hidden talents of many. She plays the, p the piano, the viola for the Greensboro Symphony. She sings, she sews, 
She crochets, Gosh. she cooks, she does desktop publishing projects. Yeah. She's a project manager. She's an ordained minister. She can marry or bury you and bless your baby. <laughs> and bless and your she, baby. And, and she also works in the journalism department at Auntie, and that's and how that's we how met. You know. okay. Does it all. So we have a all. great relationship, and I can confirm she can do all of these Hidden things. Hidden talent? Yourself? Uh, uh, when I was younger, I used to be able to dislocate my shoulder. Okay. Oh, okay. oh no. <laughs> do I can't do that anymore. You know America's Got Talent? No. Here's no talent. talent. I like to draw, you know this though, yes. both of you do. I like to draw little cartoons. I mm. do like caricatures and stuff on the side for fun. Yeah. She can sing. I can, can also sing. say the alphabet backwards and <laughs> I can list all the prepositions that there See? are. Oh, good. Yes. Because as a fourth grader, that's what our teacher made us do. <laughs> we go. walked around the building, up and down the stairs saying, saying those the things. prepositions. Yes. And so I can yeah, talk to break there. really well. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. Well, check this out. It was an historic day for North Carolina high school wrestling over the weekend. That's because Uwari Charter Academy's Heaven Fitch became the first female to win a state title in individual wrestling tournament. Take a look. I'm really excited. I'm just kind of overwhelmed with joy right now. It's just really cool. Well, I just wrestled my best and I just... I kind of dominated the match, if I'm being honest, so. I think it's just another match for her. She's wrestled so many and, and been in this situation before. I mean, not, obviously not in a state championship situation, but on a, you know, a national level, she's been wrestling in you know, Fargo and all these national tournaments. So, you know, that's the kind of message I sent to her before the match is, this is just another match for you. Um, you're a better wrestler. Whether it be girl, boy, doesn't make a difference. You're, she's a wrestler. She's a tough kid. One of the best, one of the hardest workers in the room. You know, great attitude. I'm just 
glad I can be a role model for people younger than me and like it's so insane to be inspiring others just to think that others look up to me is kind of crazy I'm just I'm really proud of myself and I'm so glad that I've come this far it, it hasn't even sunken in yet it's great it's amazing <laughs> I, it, I, I can't get over the power. Right, and then when she showed, guns. yes, it's like, I'm bam. scared from over here. <laughs> that was awesome. She took first place in the 1A 106 pound division, by the way. That, that was the state championship. That was on Saturday at the Greensboro Coliseum Complex. So congrats to her. I'd love cool. to pick her mind because I just would like to know what it's like in, in a field surrounded by boys all the time to get first place. I, I would imagine at first, Maybe some of the boys wouldn't even want to verse her, you uh, know? No. No, <laughs> not when strong. you see what she can do. No. Okay, well, Pretty congratulations, yes. Yes. Kevin. Very amazing. good. All right, uh, let's check the forecast real quick. Give you the seven day here. You're looking at low 60s for tomorrow and for Wednesday. It's a 40% chance of rain on both days. Uh, we'll keep that just for two days, but then we'll clear out and become a little bit windy after that. That'll be Thursday, partly cloudy and 45 with overnight lows going back to the uh, low 30s. Again, Friday, Saturday, a 20% chance of a sprinkle. 43 Friday, 40 on Saturday, a chilly weekend. Partly cloudy to mostly sunny, though. Sunday, Monday, highs on those two days, 45 and 50. Coming up on WFMY News 2 at 5, honoring the life of a hidden figure. We're reflecting on the life and legacy of NASA scientist Katherine Johnson in light of her passing, how her family is remembering her, and how she made history. That's next on WFMY News 2 at 5. Hello, hi, Mike check one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm not Kevin, Caitlin, you are not I can bet you $5 it's not. Mike check one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hey, Mike check, Mike check. You guys are gonna have to tell me where to stand. Mic check, mic check. I am. Why? Thank you. Hi, Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, Arkansas, California, Colorado. I didn't really. Hello, mic check. Getting ready for the show in the next four minutes. Five o'clock news coming up. Hey, ice cold milk and an Oreo cookie—they forever go together. <laughs> 